All right, good afternoon to everybody. Firstly, uh, once again, I apologize um, for that unfortunate occurrence. Uh, there was some sort of power surge, the entire power in my house switched off. And then after a minute, it came back on. I had to restart my modem and I had to actually uh, log back into the session. Uh, sorry, guys, just sometimes uh, ESCOM and the power things are out of our control. It wasn't my fault, but I do apologize for keeping you waiting. Let's hope we can run smoothly without any more surges. Um, and and let's, uh, let's, let's begin the session again. I won't do the advertising and all of that. We've already gone through that. So I'm gonna start the lesson back on when we're gonna write that together. But for the purpose of the, the recording, which gets interrupted when there's a power surge, I'm gonna start quickly from the beginning slide. Okay. All right, so firstly, welcome everybody to lesson number 10. I am your teacher, Mr. A.F. Gabriel, and this is Robotics and Coding Holiday Classes brought to you by the Department of Basic Education and Africa Teen Geeks. Uh, just remember, um, we were talking about, uh, last week, we were talking about, um, it was not last week, sorry, yesterday and the other day, I introduced you to two lessons which involve the use of variables. Today's lesson, which is lesson 10, is going to involve math operations. Okay, now I'm going to halt this presentation and we're going to come back to this presentation on math operations. What I wanna take you to is, uh, I want to make sure that lesson eight and nine, which were both lessons involving the use of variables, I want to make sure that you understand that and that you can write code on your own um, with regards to those things. Very important that you learn those. Now, although we're gonna do math operations today, we're gonna to do that in connection with variables. We're going to use math operations together with the variables. So you must understand the use of variables. All right, so just before we uh, got cut off, we had this star on the screen and we have created a little bit of uh, a, a program that I began. So when the flag is kicked, the click, the program is going to run. It puts the star in this position here and we want to make him walk across the screen and the user is gonna tell us how many steps you would like to see him take, okay? And the question was, which of these controls would we need? Which code blocks are we going to need if we're going to require input from the user? And uh, please respond on the chat. Um, somebody did so, um, but let's <clears throat> let's do that again. Uh, respond on the chat, which is the blocks of coding that we would need to go to. Which one of these do I press if I would want to ask the user for input? Anybody? Right, uh, Tato, I hope you got that right. Sensing is correct. Remember the question, somebody said motion, somebody said variables. Remember my question, where do we go when we want to ask the user for input? We go to the sensing. Right, now here's the sensing block open. Which of the blocks do I need from this list of blocks at sensing for uh, input? Right, very good. Uh, Jacobs says the ask block. That's good, ask, let's grab that. And who can remember what I taught you yesterday? What goes together with the ask block when we are working with input from the user? Now, we will connect the ask block there and we're going to ask the user how many steps should, oopsie, should I take, right? Now, how do we capture the answer? Where does the answer go? The answer goes into a answer on the chat. Well done, Tato, into a variable. 
So I click on variable and I have to make a variable. So uh, this one's kind of obvious. So I'll, I'll just do that. Click variable. Now, guys, what shall we call this variable? Remember, it's going to record for us how many steps the star is going to take. Number of steps, right. Now let's call it correctly. Let's call it number and capital N. Remember we said no spaces in name. So I'll use a capital O and then F and then a capital S. Now that is called camel case. Yesterday we had number of crows for the rooster that crowed. So we'll use the same naming style, capital N, capital O and capital F S. Right, I'll remind you again, that is called camel case naming uh, style. And it's where we bunch all the words up together, no spaces, and we use a capital letter for each new word, right? For all sprites, doesn't matter. There's only one sprite. We click on OK. And if you look on the left, the variable is created. OK, now, very well done. You now know how to make a variable. Right now, we want to look at uh, how do we capture the variable? How do we store the user's answer, which is just lying loose here, this block? And how do we capture the user's answer and store it into this variable number of steps? We did this yesterday with the rooster. And well done to all of you. I can see many of you answering correctly. Well done, Jacobs. Well done, Makwede. Uh, well done, Cheko Fatso. Please apologize. Uh, I, I do apologize if I get your names uh, uh, pronounced incorrectly, but I know you know who I'm talking about. So we're going to use the set. We're going to set to answer. Okay, now there's one more thing that I didn't do. All right, what's what's wrong with my set block? Help me. Set the variable to answer. That's what you're saying. How do I do that? Where do I click? Okay, too long for a response. We click on the down arrow out here and we, we're not gonna use my variable. We created a special variable for that called number of steps. So can you see, I, I am, as people are answering on the chat that we're gonna say use my variable. No, we are not using my variable. We created a variable right now uh, for, for this purpose, right? So we're going to click on number of steps. So it should read now as set number of steps to answer. So it's gonna ask how many steps should I take? The user is gonna type the answer on the screen and the answer is going to get stored in our variable called number of steps. Excellent. All right now also let's remember I said we wanna work with two variables. So let's ask the user for something else. Okay, so let's go back to sensing and we're gonna ask the user uh, and we're gonna ask him for the color. Let's change the color of the star. Let's call him, let's ask this question. What is my starting color? I did this quickly because you've already did it correctly out here. So we're going to need an answer block and we are going to create another variable. Right, this one is to store color, okay. Uh, let's call it start start color. We could have called it starting color, but the shorter the name, the better. This is good good enough sense. Click OK, and now we create it. So I wanted to see, wanted you to show you through this demonstration in which you are actually helping me to write the code. Uh, how we're going to use more than one variable. So far in Wednesday and Thursday's lesson, we actually only work with a single variable. Programs. Generally, bigger programs will have lots and lots of variables. In fact, a lot more than two, really. We can have variables with, uh, sorry, lots of variables in our program, but one step at a time. Today, we'll work with two of them. So we've got number of steps and we've got starting color. So the user is actually getting to control two aspects of the sprite. We can set his color and we can tell him uh, how many steps to move. Real cool artificial intelligence. Of course, we need another set and we put answer into this spot. 
And this time, we're going to set the variable to start color. Now, I want you to look very carefully at the code. All right, Seiko Fatso is choosing the color. No, Seiko Fatso, you are the programmer. You don't get to choose the color. The user gets to choose the color. You can set it when it's running. But there are some challenges with the color. We'll talk about that in a moment. All right, now let's see what we've got. One, first block. There's no loops here, no repeats or anything. So it's just one, two, three, four, five. This is an algorithm with five instructions for the star to, you know, the starfish to follow. Step one, go to this position. Step two, ask the user, uh, how many steps should I take? Save that into a variable, it goes there. Does the star take any steps here? No, we haven't. We're collecting all our input first. Okay, next is the starting color. The star's gonna ask another question. What is my starting color? And wait, right, there's no need for a wait one second and so on, like we do uh, when we, let's just quickly go to looks, when we put the say block there, um, because it's going to speech bubble, but the speech bubble will disappear when the next instruction comes. For the sensing, we don't need to because the ask instruction has a wait at the end. Can you see that word wait? So input, the computer waits for it. We don't have to put our own uh, pause to uh, say how many seconds we want the instruction. Okay, so, um, some people are having problem with audio. You should you should be able to hear me quite clearly. Uh, let me just see if I can get my speaker on a little louder. I think I do have my speaker on quite loud. Uh, let's see. Yeah, look, my uh, my speaker output is at hundred percent now. So there's nothing I can do from my end if you cannot hear. Okay. Uh, right. Okay. So number of steps is sorted out and we asked for the starting color. Okay, now, um, for the starting color, we can change it straight away because we're not going to change the color so many times. We don't need a loop to change the color. It's color is only changing once. We will need a loop for the number of steps because you know the user might say five and it, we might have to make him walk five times and we need to do that in a loop. So now let's change his starting color. Now, to change his color, where do we go? Which of the blocks do I choose if I want to change the color of the sprite help? Looks. Um, Jacob's family login says looks. Hmm. Ishmael says looks. Well done. You both are correct. And I'm sure the others may be just slow in typing. Uh, we are right. We're going to go looks. Now, which of the things do we need in the looks? Um, if we want to change his color, is it, is it so obvious? Um, that is really obvious. Look at that. We will choose this block, change the color. Okay, now we're going to say, sorry, not change the color. Uh, we're going to set the color because we want to set the color. Can you see? Set the starting color to. And what we're going to put there? What's going to go in this spot? Okay, uh, guys, please don't raise your hands. I will, as soon as we're done with this program, I'll give you an opportunity to ask questions. Right now, let's go back to what we were doing. Um, Right, set the color to, right, now here, before we were putting numbers there, we were putting, to, you know, change the color to any, we put a particular number there. Now we're going to put the, the user's color there, which is start color, start color, right? So we go to the variables and watch this, right? So this you might not have done yesterday. We didn't do this yesterday. We pick it, the variable out of there. Can you see it? Let me just place it there. Can you see that's an oval shape? So this, you can either put your own number in there or you could even put a variable in there. Now I want you to look and observe very carefully. This is now when we are using a variable to set the color of a sprite. But since the variable is coming from the user as input, in actual fact, what has happened is the user 
has chosen the color of the sprite. You as the programmer have no way of controlling what color it can change to. The user can pick any number. Now I want you to notice, and you will see this when the program is running, we, uh, we don't type in colors like green or red or blue or whatever it is, because the computer is able to, uh, if we had to type in colors, with words, we'd be very limited to a very, very few colors. There are very few colors in the spectrum, right? We'll only get about seven colors. The rest of the colors are, are created by mixing colors. You know that, right? Now a computer can't store all this uh, minute spectrum of colors. It's got a wide range of colors and it does that by mixing colors. So the computer uh, interprets colors by, by numbers, okay? And the only way you as a programmer can learn those numbers is if you experiment with them, uh, which is what we are doing exactly now. We're gonna see what number the user will enter and you can see what number the, uh, uh, the star, uh, well, you can see what color the star changes and then you will know what number that color is, right? But more about that when we, when we run the program. Okay, uh, right, now the next thing, okay, look, you know what, let's run it now. Let's run it now. It's, it's not going to do any walking because we haven't included that in the code, right? And there's six very simple instructions to this algorithm. So uh, let's, let's press the flag. Let's run the piece. Right. The star is saying through a speech bubble because we've got to ask there, how many steps should I take? Right. So let's just say five. You type it in there. You click on the tick. Notice now it's asking another question, but let's have a look at our variable at the top. The number of steps is now stored and saved as five. That's our variable. Our new variable is now called number of steps. It stores the number that the user gave us. It will always, that will stay there throughout the program. Every time we want to use this, we use this variable. Where's that variable? Uh, here it is right here, I'm pointing to it. Number of steps. Now the starting color is still zero, it's still nothing. The starfish is now asking, what is my starting color? So let's, let's just say eight. Okay, let's play tick. Right, now you can't put words there. If you put green, it won't know what you're doing. It needs a number. So you've got to pick a number for the starting color, right? Okay. Uh, and, that, and that's it. So that's our two, uh, our two variables. Right, let's stop the program. That starting color was very close to the purple that was already there. Right, so that's why it didn't look like it changed too much. So let's let's um, say number of steps. Let's say three, and let's just choose a really big number for for starting color. Let's say twenty. Okay, now now you saw that changed a bit to pink. So it is changing to the color that the user chose. When we run the program a third time, we'll we'll pick maybe we'll go thirty. Right? Is it taking any steps? Although the number of steps the user entered is three and it's still saved and you can see it's in the program, it will stay there until we close this entire uh, web page. Uh, remember the variable will stay until you clear the memory, but it's not taking any steps. Why? Because there's no algorithm, no instructions on the steps. Okay, so everybody, you're gonna help me again. Let us make, uh, let's make the starfish walk now. Um, because he's going to walk a number of times, we're going to need a loop. Who can remember which of these structures do I need if I want to make a loop? Okay, answer on the chat. All right, okay, uh, right. Uh, control, Amir is right. Ishmael is actually giving the uh, instruction that we're going to need. First, we have to find it. So let's click on control. And now we're going to select the repeat. Now, remember there's two, we did this yesterday. There's a repeat until, um, and there is a repeat 10. You can see both on my screen. Which one am I going to need? This repeat with the number or the repeat until? Okay, Jacobs says repeat 10, this one. Everybody agree, that's the correct one. Okay, McQuere, Trevor. Mohaw says repeat until, okay, good, wrong. I can now tell you that remember, we know how many steps he's going to take. He's not going to, we're not going to use a decision. The user is going to give us an exact number. Remember, I taught you again yesterday. When you know the number of, uh, well, in this case is steps. When you know the number of times the loop must run, we always pick this one. This one until we pick when we do not know
how many steps do we want to take? What do we put in the place of 10? That's the next question. Help me, everybody. Very good. We're going to put our variable. Well done, Jacobs. Those people who are <clears throat> answering, I see it's the same people, but you guys are quite smart. You're doing pretty well. Uh, but and the rest of you, not that you something's wrong with you if you're not answering, you're still learning. Um, maybe you're shy, but but don't worry. Just pay very careful attention. Uh, practice with the programs, and you'll see you'll you'll catch up in no time. Okay, so can you see our variable number of steps? We want to put that yesterday. Uh, sorry, put that there. I said yesterday because we did this with the rooster yesterday. With the rooster, we did number of cuffs. So it's the same concept, right? So how many steps? Uh, shall the starfish take? Repeat. Now we're going to make it walk, right? Um, how do we make it walk? What is the instruction for walking? In fact, which of these sections of blocks will we find um, movement? Motion. Excellent. And of course, which one will we pick? This one, move 10 steps. Okay, excellent. And we put that in the loop. It's going to move. Let's make it a bit bigger than 10. Let's just go 15. Make him jump a little bit. Okay, so we're not gonna uh, make him go fast and slow. We did a lot of experimenting with that already. This is really about the variables. Okay, and what else? I need to add one more thing there. All right, Randy, Randy, Ranzo says we should put 20 steps. We'll experiment Let's now. Let's run it with 15. One more thing has to go after that. If we don't put it, the starfish will move very fast. So, and, and, and we won't see, right? We need a weight. Which section will I find weight in? Controls, right? Oh, everybody's saying controls. I click, ah, look, there it is. You guys are clever. Wait, and now remember, I want to get this joined up to the move. Can you see if I if I clicked here, it would have joined to the repeat statement and it will happen after, which is the wrong place. I want it to be inside. So, oh, and I don't want it to go there above the move. I want it to be below the move. So again, you've got to practice um, holding the mouse down and moving these blocks around and then letting go so that it's in the right spot. Okay. Um, all right, so uh, there, there he is. And he's gonna go a number of steps. Now let's run the program. Okay, how many steps should I take? Can you see the old numbers are still there? But that will change when we enter a new one. So let's say seven. Now we've got that number of steps as part of our code, so he should walk. And then we click on the tick. Right, what shall be our starting color? We said we'll try, ooh, 340. Who knows what that will be? And then we click take. Right, and he starts off as red. One step, two step, three step, four, five, six, seven. Seven steps. Okay, I missed the first one on the count there. <laughs> and his starting color is red. And that's correct. Uh, now let's run the program again. He goes back to being purple. He goes back to his beginning steps. Let's make him take five. So his starting color is green. Working out quite right. Now, can you see how who's controlling the color of the starfish? The user enters it on input. How many steps does it take? Who decides that? The user chooses the number of steps. Okay. And, and that's pretty cool. It's an artificial star, right? Okay. Um, let's make him change color with each step. How's that? Okay. Um, I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to say, now I'm going to go to not set. I'm going to go to change because I want his color to change each time. Where on earth is that? change color right now if i want him to change color with each step where do i put that any idea where should i put it yeah in the loop magueda you're very clever very clever you i'm so impressed with all of you guys even uh, tato i hope i got your name right you guys are very smart 
Okay, oh, we don't want you to go there. And now look at that. Change the color effect. Uh, I don't know, let's, let's change it by 20, 25 is too quick. Now it's gonna take a step and then each step is going to be in a new color. That should look pretty cool. Let's try. How many steps should I take? Let's make him take eight steps. What shall be his starting color? Let's start him off at uh, 20 and then we'll go 20 at a time. Ooh, he finished off on blue. And then of course he went back to his original color. Hmm, that's pretty nice, isn't it? Okay. So let's run it one more time and focus on the input. Can you see that whatever variables the user puts there is saved in the program? Okay, so uh, let's start with... Uh, Let's go six, we didn't use six. And let's go with a very high starting color of 100. Let's see what happens after 100. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and uh, that's it with the variables, right? So you can see how you can use variables um, and you can um, control various things. I, I am. I don't have a lot of time left, and I, I did want to get into operations. But what I am going to do is, since I cannot do operations in eight minutes, um, so I, I do apologize. Uh, the glitch did lose up some time. In fact, these classes I have been pushing them to one hour. They they were supposed to be around about forty five minutes. Uh, so you actually have been getting a little extra 10, 15 minutes at the end of each one. Uh, I might, I'm not going to be able to give you that extra 10 or 15 minutes to today because due to other um, Zoom meetings happening afterwards, uh, I have to stop it exactly at two o'clock. So uh, with the eight minutes, perhaps we should rather stick around on this program and experiment with a bit more with the variables. Uh, so I got, a, I got a cool idea. Let us, uh, let's, let's get the user to choose the speed. Let's ask the user, whether he wants the starfish to go fast or whether you want him to go you know, fast or slow, right? Uh, so let's add a third control. Let's go with um, the ask. Oh, no, I don't wanna break that up. I broke it up at the wrong place. Um, let's go ask. Right, and we can ask him there. Uh, okay, all right. You know what? I I'm going to uh, the class right up until two o'clock. Uh, can we add a backdrop? Yes, yes, you can add a backdrop. Um, and what I'm going to do right now is uh, I'm going to end the session because we are out of time. I do apologize. You can see this starfish program. We'll go, we'll go into variables tomorrow. Uh, if you would like to put a backdrop, we can do that quickly before we end the class. And um, I don't know, where do you like the starfish to walk? Uh, let's make him walk on the beach. After all, he is a... He is a starfish. <laughs> okay, right, did, I, did I select that properly? Ah, there we go, a starfish walking on the beach. Click back. Okay, all right, so um, I, I am out of time right now. So guys, I just wanna thank you. Uh, we used today to really enforce the idea of variables and you have uh, actually together responded and you've been writing these programs with the use of variables. So I wanna thank you very much. You guys are excellent. You are learning very, very well. Uh, we are out of time for the session today, but I promise you a good full hour session in which we'll do everything with variables tomorrow. Thank you very much for joining me today. I apologize for the glitch in the system. It wasn't my fault though.